One of the things that we do know for sure is that God really cares for his people. He has different ways of showing that he cares for us. Sometimes it's in direct provision, provision of practical things. We know that ultimately he shows his care for us in that he sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for us. That's the greater love has no man that is to be seen in Jesus' life and ministry. But there are other ways as well. You think about how he provided for specific needs of the, of the church community. Old Testament times, he provided them with judges and with prophets, with individual leaders like Moses or Joshua or different individuals of that caliber. But then when you come into the New Testament, God also shows his care for the people by providing leaders in the church. You have the apostles and then the apostles uh, in their ministries going around, setting up new churches, church planting. In those churches, they then appoint leaders. And that's what this little bit in 1 Timothy 3 is about. It's about appointing overseers or pastors, bishops, elders, presbyters, as the different word the word is, and deacons, people who are involved in practical care. It's really God is saying, I care for you. I care about the church. I care about the order of the church. I care of the, about the protection and the defense of the church. And, and this is a wonderful indication of the way God loves us. I don't know what your circumstances are today, but I think it's just good for you and I to be reminded of God's care. And while maybe right now at this moment in time you're not aspiring to any leadership, at the same time, listening to this scripture is telling you that God has provided for you. He's provided for you in the care in leadership in the church, and he's also indicating through this that he cares about your soul. He cares about your growth. He cares about your life. Because when you see this person, this person's character, and it's all about character, far more character than gift. And sometimes in our world today, people are so excited about gifts, you know, people's ability to speak or to perform or to do certain things. But that's not the way the scriptures really sets the standard. It looks at character first. And so when you think about the characteristics, I've summed them up in the words of, well, here is a man who is to love his wife, who is to not let his love get out of control, self-controlled, who is to have a love of strangers, who is to love the word, who is to love moderation and therefore love restraint, who is to love the spirit of calmness, not to love quarrels, who is not to love money or be controlled by it, and who loves their family well and is loved by others outside, has a good reputation. And so when I think about those characteristics, they're all characteristics of the heart, that this love of Christ is poured into our hearts and produces by the Holy Spirit this love within us. These individuals whom the Lord raises up to be leaders among us are his provision for us. They're there to guide us. What is a shepherd? Because that's really what a bishop or a presbyter or an elder is. They're like a shepherd. The Bible talks about the great shepherd. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know how he loves us. He says, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. And that's the quality above all, isn't it? The sacrificial love. But that's what God is He's interested in you. He wants to provide for you and for I. Those who will care for us in this way, he cares for us and he will raise up people to care for us as well. I suppose the challenge in all of this is that we are willing to, one, pray for them and cooperate with them. And I think thirdly, we should also pray for other people, especially younger generation, to develop the character to aspire to become leaders for the future, that they might set their heart on this, because ambition is a good thing. We love to see ambition, good ambition. Pray for any young person you know that God will put in their heart good ambitions, and especially young men, that they would become the future teachers, 
pastors, leaders, that will then continue to be the provision of the Lord for the church as it goes forward in the days ahead. I also want just to mention to you today that side by side is not just me sharing some thoughts to encourage you and bring good news, I hope, into your life, which I hope it does, but it's also to, to create a little community. I'm not really worried how many people tune in. What I am really interested in is that continuing thought to concentrate on the depth of what we do rather than on the breadth. And so I'd really like to be able to help you in a deep way rather than help so many people, though the more is fine. So in order to do that, I just want to say, if there is anything that we can help you with, if praying for one another, maybe there's a burden on your heart, maybe there's a need in your life, maybe there's some, some matter that's concerning you, I want you to know that you can feed back those things. And in a sensitive way, I'll try to pray and maybe share some prayer requests if that's permitted and that's okay so that we can develop this sense of community among us, that we are, we're all walking side by side. Because just as I know you need support and I need support, there are lots of others out there who need it in these days. And isn't it just at times like this that we need to help each other? And the Lord provides each other to be the support and care as well, bearing one another's burdens. So I hope that that encourages you today. It encourages me to know I have a great shepherd who's caring for me and has provided others to care alongside. Praise his name. What a great saviour he is. And he's our saviour forever and indeed forever. Mm -hmm.